it's the 8th of February, about a month, exactly a month after I did the last video of this bed and some of the plants in this garden. And things have changed a lot. You can definitely see the, that there's a lot of life. Spring bulbs, hellebores, and um, seedlings of hellebores coming up. So in this bed, we call this the spring bed because a lot of the plants in it um, are um, looking at their best in the spring. And as the season goes on, there'll be a lot more again. So I thought I'd just show you some of these beautiful hellebores. Um, we've cut off the lower leaves and you can see there's lots going on. We've got some lovely snowdrops. Down here are all the seedlings of the hellebores. They're very prolific at seeding. Um, and coming up here are the start of these lovely um, tulips. And this variety is called Red Riding Hood. So no prizes for guessing what color the flower would be on that. But the interesting thing about this particular tulip is that it's a tulip that's suitable for naturalizing. A lot of tulips won't come back year after year when you plant the bulb. And the reason why is because the soil um, is a little bit too heavy in most gardens. Um, and they just don't like the heavy soil. They want a very sandy soil to come back year after year. So breeders grow them uh, in Holland and in other parts of the world uh, where the soil is very sandy and they give them very specific treatments to make them grow on. But these ones here are quite happy to come back year after year. And one of the added bonuses of these is before the flower and after the flower, they've got these lovely little markings. And as these open out a little bit wider, you've got this lovely foliage, which makes them attractive before and after flowering. I've got a lot of different varieties of hellebores here. This one here um, is just finishing. This is a Christmas rose, Hellebores niger. And then these ones here are Helleborus orientalis. And we grew these from seedlings that I collected in a, um, a customer that I used to work for in their garden. And we've got lots of different colors within them, as you can see. And there are bluebells and small tete tete daffodils yet to come. Lots more hellebores along here. Another nice, very early spring flowering bulb is this iris, and the variety is called Catherine Hodgkins. And this one naturalized itself in our garden, it's in lots of places. Just starting here, and I'll show you these at a later date. Are these beautiful wood anemones, anemone blanda? And this area here will be absolutely covered in these, along with some of the lovely little primroses as well. And this one is a double variety, so it's got more petals, and um, it's quite nice too. Got lots of different types. And this one is long finished now, and you can see still. The sepals, the outer parts of the calyx, are um, going to remain for quite a while after they flower. Beautiful little crocuses coming up as well, and because it's not sunny now, they haven't opened. When it's sunny, they're actually open. And beside this here, the smell from this is absolutely beautiful. It's a Daphne. Um, I don't know where it's blue or odor at, I'm going to have to check that up. I might put it on screen if I do. There's an abundance of flowers on this, and I think I mentioned before, most of the plants we've actually cut off the old leaves. We 
because they get this blight or a black spot on them and that can spread from one plant to another and also when you take off the leaves you can see that it actually uh, shows off the flowers a lot better the sarcococca uh, known as the sweet box it's in flower now and some people love the smell and some people hate it I'm one of the people who don't like the smell um, it smells a little bit insipid to me like a uh, cat's pee <laughs> but my wife thinks it smells nice and I think it's actually genetic whether you like the smell or not it's a genetic thing uh... I'm going to prune this hedge we planted two years ago it's a uh, natural and native hedge not everything is native but um, it's a natural multi-species hedge that divides the area between the end of our garden up here uh, yet to be developed uh, so it's a little bit messy um, but I have a plan for that and it divides the area between our garden this pathway across to the field and farmers land here and we've got a fantastic view here and the sun sets over there in the summer so I don't want to get it too tall for that reason um, because we want to be able to see uh, the sunset and see the fields and see the view. Uh, I've got a few different species in here. I'll start at this end. Um, so we have uh, hazel here. Uh, produces hazelnuts if it's let grow big enough. This one probably won't produce a lot because it's going to be cut back quite often but it's still a nice species. Everything here you'll notice is uh, deciduous, there's no evergreen. I wouldn't have been against having maybe some holly within this but I didn't uh, put it in, I couldn't get it at the time. This here is amelanchier which is commonly planted as a kind of a natural species hedge. Uh, also known as the snowy mespolis and it has white flowers followed by uh, some berries which are good for wildlife. Um, beside this here is uh, the gilder rose or viburnum oculus and they're all really doing well considering they're only here for a couple of years. Um, so yeah this um, uh, these were all bought as whips um, which would have been uh, into their second year of life I suppose uh, they had one year fully growing and then they were lifted up um, and then uh, so I've got a few of those we've got more amelanchier and I have uh, here a wild rose now in this hedge here which is the original hedge alongside the road there is dog rose but look at the thorns on it and it's a bit of a brute and it grows quite big I figured in this hedge I would put um, the wild rose which is uh, it has less um, lethal thorns since we're here beside a pathway it wouldn't be a good idea to have something that would catch you and cut you <laughs> on the way by um, this wouldn't be used in hedges that much but because it's a small length of hedge I can manage it in such a way that it will uh, be able to compete with the other um, plants in the hedge. Um, you normally cut out the older growth which is the darker growth here and promote some of the newer growth here and in a larger hedge this wouldn't be practical but in a hedge that's this long I can do that. Uh, as well as that we've got some uh, beech along here, more hazel, more amelanchier, um, and I think that's it. A good few different species. It was really nice during the summer and we had some lovely rose hips which are kind of finished now but they were bright red. So what I want to do is to take it back off the pathway. I want to encourage some new growth and crucially I want to take it out of my neighbour's land uh, where it's touching the electric wires which will stop the cattle from uh, I suppose eating our hedge and busting through into our garden. So I'm going to get going with this. important to disconnect uh, the electric first of all 
so I don't uh, don't electrocute myself. It wouldn't kill me, obviously. It would just give me a little dart, but it's not very pleasant. So as I say, what I really want to do is take the hedge back out of my neighbour's uh, garden. Uh, and probably while I'm at it, cut out things like the nettles and pull out some of the things that will uh, be brutes. I, I like the idea of ground ivy along here and other species. Things for biodiversity. Leave the grass in most places. Just try and manage it a little bit. So regardless of whether it's growth I want to encourage or it's old growth, I can't have it come up in my neighbour's garden, so I have to cut everything back that comes through here. And it might be a good idea to cut it to an inward facing bud rather than an outward facing one. So it will grow back into my garden. So prune it there. And just pruning above a bud is a good idea. And this is what the wild rose does. It sends out some suckers sometimes. So it is going to keep coming into here. But the cattle will keep this back if they have to. But I'm going to cut it anyway. And by clipping these back, if I constantly clip them, the growth will get closer together. And by getting closer together, you'll get a more dense hedge. So every time you prune something, it will shoot out two ways. Then if you prune it again, it'll shoot out four ways. If you prune it again, it'll shoot out eight ways. And that kind of makes uh, smaller branches, but more tightly clipped together. So we put some manure on this uh, hedge to get it started last year. It's not something you would want to do with a nat natural native hedge every year, but because this was establishing, uh, the manure would keep the moisture in and then also uh, would give the hedging a little boost. But one of the unfortunate side effects of putting manure on the ground is it, it will encourage nettles. Nettles love ground full of nutrition and nitrogen. We had uh, two ecologists stay with us last year and they said to me, that nettles, in terms of ecology, are a signifier of human activity. And I'd never heard that before, but uh, where people keep animals um, and you have manure, you'll always see nettles. Uh, or where you see runoff of maybe nutrition to a point uh, where the ground has been fertilised, uh, you'll see nettles because they love the rich soil. So I've pruned everything back here along the hedge. Um, along the, the boundary, the, um, the sheep wire here, uh, to keep it out of there. What I want to do as well is to take the top off it. As I say, I want to keep the view along here. So I'll be pruning along here. And then I'll be doing some pruning on the pathway at this side uh, to keep it back behind the timber edge. Uh, I'll also need to do some kind of uh, more specific specialist pruning here because uh, the rosa rugosa or the wild rose will need encouraging it can't just be clipped back like uh, a traditional hedge would be it needs uh, encouragement of the newer growth um, and removal of some of the old growth and if i do remove the old growth i'm going to leave it there so fungi and uh, insects can uh, you know basically utilize it for shelter and for food the beech, because it holds its leaves, gives a nice bit of texture and colour to the hedge here. I'm pruning it back uh, into our side. And beech is one plant that particularly likes to be cut back like a traditional hedge. The closer you cut it together, um, the more intense the look is. It's quite happy to be cut back. You can see I'm just knocking off anything that comes through here. That's the first thing to do because it can't stay here. But then I'm going to be a little bit more specific when I get to the other side. I've finished cutting the inside of this and I've started cutting on the top. And I'm not being very careful or very accurate, but I am trying to prune uh, near enough to a bud and not right across it. Um, yesterday a machine came along to cut all of these hedges alongside the farm and uh, kindly cut our hedge as well. But you can see that this machine on a tractor 
it does quite a uh, brutal job of the pruning and uh, I think the things like the ash and the alder um, and the brambles won't really mind that uh, too much but with our little hedge that has nicer species in it uh, it's good to be a little bit more accurate so I'm pruning near enough to the to the buds um, and I'm just using the this here as a guide for height and that's what I'm at. Now we've cut both sides and the top is reasonably level across there and as it's a natural hedge you're not too fussy about it being razor sharp and because it's young you're not really going to see whether it's razor sharp uh, flat on the top I'm not sure I want that anyway um, so uh, a few things to say about this before we finish um, a lot of these plants uh, being kind of natural kind of uh, easy plants to grow uh, and good for biodiversity they uh, produce a flower and a fruit um, so this one the gilder rose will have a nice berry after a white flower uh, quite pretty looks a little bit like a viburnum hydrangea type uh, flower and it flowers on last year's growth so we are trying to keep um, encourage uh, new last year's growth if we were just to cut this uh, like a normal hedge just clip it back against the timber edge here and on the other side um, we'd probably end up with getting a lot of um, older growth in the long run so what I need to do is encourage a little bit of newer growth every so often that's newer say last year's this one here um, is probably the first growth that it had on it from uh, about three years ago maybe four years ago um, the same with this wild rose and this one doesn't look too healthy but that's very old growth and it won't produce flowers as much as maybe say this one which is a newer piece of growth will that produced flowers last year but if I was to prune back on some of the buds here I'll get more and if you look at this here this was produced last year and that's going to produce flowers next year so I'm trying to encourage that a lot and probably to remove some of these it's not practical to do this with a natural hedge most of the time and keeping some of these in won't necessarily be a bad thing the only thing is they take some of the uh, vigor from the newer um, stems so I am going to manage these a little bit because I can with a, a shorter hedge and the objective with this all the time is to try and encourage uh, flowers and fruits and have a nice natural hedge looking out onto the lovely landscape <laughs> Thank you.